trying to get an airstrike over on that opposite side. What's up everyone, Town from the Airsoft Headquarters here and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to do a very quick overview video of weapon mounted lights as you can see here. So obviously we're in a little bit dark environment because I wanna be able to show you what some of these lights can do. But what are some of the reasons why you would want a weapon mounted light? Well, first of all, like a location down here at the Airsoft Arena where it's plenty dark, um, having a weapon mounted light is gonna be super beneficial in order not only to see your targets, but able to illuminate the environment that's around you. So for example, if you are just um, capturing an objective, then having the weapon light pointed upwards or even towards the ground here is gonna help illuminate that environment and allow you to uh, get more information. Other times, if we're utilizing them in a tactical space, having that weapon light shining on our target is going to disorient those targets um, so we can take advantage of that situation. It's more beneficial for indoors or low light environments. We happen to be a combination of both of those. If you're mainly going to be an outdoor in broad daylight type of player, weapon lights may not be your forte. Um, but that being said, I do wanna show you some of the weapon lights that I have here. And I do wanna do another video in the future, breaking down two very specific weapon mounted lights. One of them happens to be the very first one here. This is the Streamlight TLR1 and I happen to have this one remote mounted onto the rifle system specifically. What we're gonna do is we're gonna project the uh, light onto the wall here and we're gonna see what the light actually does at a distance of 10 feet and 50 feet. And one of the things that we're gonna look at, especially here with the TLR-1S is that it's very, very bright in the very center. And again, I'm only 10 feet away from the wall and the outer uh, diameter of the light projects outwards quite a bit. Now this is gonna be a 15 foot wall and the outer diameter of the light, as far as the maximum projection, almost reaches that 15 feet. So if we're in a very, very tight room, um, this is gonna do very, very well as far as projecting a lot of light in multiple directions so that we can really illuminate that environment. But it also has a really nice center projection. So if we wanna you know, point this flashlight at something very specific, um, then like a target, that will help disorientate them. So we're gonna go back to 50 feet and we're gonna see how that projection ends up looking. So here right at 50 feet, and then shining the light at that wall again, that center beam where it's most brightest, it covers the majority of the height there. And that's an eight foot wall. So the actual center part is six feet in height. And that outer diameter projects a lot, very, very widely to where if I project the light at a hundred feet, then we can see a lot and in a lot of detail. And these are, the, this I think is just a 300 or 500 lumen flashlight. So it does a really, really, really good job projecting light um, in a very straight path. Now this is a brand new flashlight. Compare that to this one, which is the same TLR1, but three years old. It happens to have a different color and the center beam is not nearly as brilliant compared to the newer one right here. So if we you know, go out at the 100 foot mark, then we don't see nearly as much detail versus, oh, that's so bright. And again, this is only 300 lumens. What's super cool about these guys as well, these Streamlight TLR1s, is that you do have a, um, a strobe effect. So that's gonna help disorientate uh, targets even further. So next up, we have the Olight Valkyrie PL Pro. Uh, this is another one of my favorites personally, um, and for reasons that I will break down in more detail with an overview video. But as a weapon light compared to everything else, it works phenomenally well as well. So here at 10 total feet, again, a very bright uh, center projection, and it actually throws light as far as that outer radius, um, much wider compared to that of the stream light previously. It's hitting past that 15 foot section of wall. So it throws light in a way wider aspect. So this would be much better as far as a 
indoor close quarters CQB type of weapon light. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very, very short. And what I like about this is that it's actually, uh, it has a magnetic plate on the top surface here or what would be on the bottom actually. So you can charge it magnetically with a uh, magnetic tab. And then if you have the weapon light, which is coming in the mail for me, it just magnets on there, super advantageous. Um, I think this guy is gonna be uh, very, very useful and may make its way into the store's inventory for sale. But going out to 50 feet, that center light projection actually starts to you know, widen all the way out to 15 feet. And then the outer diameter of the light ring at 50 feet is just so wide, it illuminates everything around you. Um, so if you're looking for like just disorientation or like a, a spotlight, this would not be a light for it. This is gonna be more of a floodlight specifically. And if we transition and shift over to 100 feet, you know, you're covering a lot of ground with that center beam, which um, you know, just helps just get all the information in the environment. Um, and I'm just going out to 200 feet right there. It still holds really, really, really well. So I am actually bringing it into a workable space. I'm plenty impressed. It has a really, really good system. Anyway, next one. So next up, if you're more fan of a, I guess a more impressionist kit as far as having a military specific accessory, we happen to have the, um, this is the FMA, I think it is, um, but it's an airsoft specific PEC-15. Uh, so the PEC-15 has a integrated flashlight, integrated laser and infra integrated infrared laser. Um, so this is something that I will attach to my non-recoiling airsoft guns uh, if I want to work with um, my psionics night vision. Um, but it's really cool because it has that built-in flashlight like we have here. And you can even work uh, a laser, which I think it's just, just smoky enough. Oh yeah, look at that beam. Oh my God, that's so fucking cool. nerding out um, and then we can select between a couple different modes so if we want flashlight and laser mode engaged or if we want to click right over to the infrared which obviously you guys are not going to see um, but what we are most concerned about is the weapon light itself now at 10 feet here not super great as far as projection um, the entire light spread is just, you know, the entire actual projected light, meaning that you don't have a spotlight center and then an outer diameter. It just happens to be all one. And then we have a little bleed off on the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, for some reason. Um, so it works more as a spotlight, but unfortunately it doesn't do too well. I think this guy is only rated at 180 lumens, which you can get lower lumen flashlights to project light really, really well. Um, but overall for really, really close quarters, like 10 feet, it works really well. But let's step it back to 50 and I'll show you just how bad it is. So now we actually start to um, project this onto the wall at 50 feet. And it's, it's just a really weak flood light. You don't have a center spotlight in order to target or a, a, to, to project onto a target. So you don't have any type of disorienting systems. Um, there's no strobe effect on this one, um, you know, and just trying to get it out to 100 feet. Even though I'm shining at the 50 foot wall, there's so much spread that it's projecting at the 100 foot distance. So it's just, it works well in very, very close quarters. At this 50 foot mark here, I mean, it's it's good to know what you're shooting at, but I wouldn't use it as far as um, a target disorienting system. Um, the other thing about this one specifically, I made mention that this is not something for my recoiling airsoft guns. My electric blowback here, the KWA T10, nor my gas blowback. Because what happens is when I have this pressure pad activated, so I have it double clicked and that will lock it onto the on mode or 
I can press and hold it on, release, press, hold on, release. Um, but there's no strobe effect. But if I happen to be pressing this down and shooting my electric recoil gun, it disconnects the electric contacts inside the PEC system here that it activates a strobe effect because it's breaking the contact and then reconnecting it. Um, so it's not supposed to strobe, but if you break it enough, it will strobe for you. Um, so while it looks really good for impressionist kits, I don't personally run this on a lot of guns um, unless I wanna run that super cool guy laser. So this next one is going to be the Inforce WML. Yes, the Inforce WML. So this guy is actually the flashlight that I would normally have attached to this T10 here. What I like most about the design is that it is designed for those medium length handguards because the pressure pad is integrated into the very back plate of the flashlight here. So this normally would mount it at that 12 o'clock position, but because of you know, other videos that I'm doing, uh, we just gotta keep it on the side here. So if you look over your gun, you would be able to press and release and activate this flashlight system with your thumb if you're doing a thumb over bore setup, like what I'm doing here. Um, this I find super advantageous, especially with this shorter 10 inch barrel system, because it happens to be the exact same uh, grip length as to what I would want to run. Um, so Inforce or whoever originally designed this type of pressure pad system, really, really good system. Um, but as far as the actual projection beam, here at 10 o'clock, we have something similar to what the Streamlight and the Olights were doing for. They have a much brighter uh, center projected light, and then they have a, a softer diameter. Um, and we see here at 10 feet, really, really tight, and a super wide diameter. So big, big fan of that. Again, for the reasons I've already explained, helps illuminate super close quarters, and at distance, you can help project that tighter beam at whatever your intended target is. So let's go at 50 and see what it does. I already have an idea as to what it does, um, because I use this flashlight on this gun the most, and this gun just happens to be what I use the most down here at the Airsoft Arena. So, projecting this onto that wall at 50 feet, that inner diameter is projecting the entire wall. And then that softer outer diameter just spreads the light out, you know, so you can get as much information and see as much target as possible. And then going over out to that 100 feet, you can still see targets and uh, objectives at that 100 feet. Um, but obviously they're significantly more spread. It acts more as a floodlight at that 100 feet. What I will note is that the actual color of the light itself is significantly softer than that of the stream lights or the O-Light systems. Um, so it's not nearly as harsh of a system. And I like that personally um, because when playing against people, I don't want to blind them and I don't want to ruin their eyesight. So the Inforce flashlight is, in my opinion, one of the better ones um, to play against other people. Now, if I'm going to have a gun specific or a weapon light specifically for a carry pistol, then the Streamlight or the Olights would be one of the better ones because of that tighter projected center light system. Uh, but for Airsoft specifically, and as well as the function, really like the Inforce here. So here I have a Airsoft replica flashlight. Um, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a Surefire clone, um, but they do a really good job not disclosing, disclosing what the license is supposed to be. But overall, I really like this flashlight as well. Weird, a lot of biased weapon mounted lights that I'm showing you guys I happen to like because I run them. Um, so this guy is a little bit shorter of a, or thinner of a system. So it helps maintain a lower of overall profile of a weapon system, meaning it's not a super big ball or a super a large housing that you know is gonna snag on any type of clothing or gear when you try to sling it around your body. Um, it's not something that hangs off super big for a, an extra target for people to shoot at. Um, and I actually have these guys on my PDW systems because of that thinner profile. It just aesthetically looks a little bit better. 
Now with this system specifically, um, this is much better ran with the pressure pad that I'm currently holding right here. And you can see the wire right here. It does originally come with a press activation system, um, but with this remote uh, pad, it actually works at that same 12 o'clock position. So when I'm aiming down sights, I can activate that pad with my thumb and I can turn it on or off however I want. So if I don't want to do super sneaky, cool guy, move around buildings and sneak around from around corners without having to show off my location, obviously without my pistol light on, then I can come around an area, quick hit that 12 o'clock pressure pad, aim down sights, take the shot, become super sneaky boy again. So I like pressure pads for that reason. And this one specifically doesn't have a strobe or a stay on activation system. So whenever I have that pressure pad activated, it's just on. A quick double click is not going to turn on strobe. It's not going to keep the light constantly on. Um, so it's really good for the reasons that I said. It just makes it much easier to pop out, take a shot with the light on, pop back in the cover. So that being said, let's look at how it operates. So here at 10 feet, this is the tightest of all of the weapon lights for that center uh, light. Um, the outer diameter is much clearer compared to the stream light or the O light or even the Inforce. You can actually see the cutoff as to when the outer diameter just stops projecting light. Uh, so overall, it works really, really good as far as light projection compared to everything else that we have shown here. Now let's show it off at that 50 foot mark. Now here at 50 feet, again, really, really tight center projection with that light system. And then we get obviously that wider flood, but we can still retain that ring uh, where the outer diameter of light just stops working. So if I wave the light back and forth, I know exactly where that projection is. Um, and that center line I can keep, you know, intended towards a target, or I can point it out at 100 feet and just help disorientate targets. So say for example, I'm here at the 200 foot mark here at the arena. And the 200 foot mark is way, way down there. And in a, this very specific scenario, I'm gonna sneak into this 200 foot mark. Um, I'm gonna wait for someone to cross out into the light and then I'm gonna shine my light, take a couple of shots and then turn the light back off and then sneak away or go back into a piece of cover. Um, so that is why I like the system, again, on more of my CQB base guns because you do need to be very intentional with activating and deactivating that pressure pad. So, what I have here, or what I've shown you guys, is five, six different light systems that you can mount to your rifle system, and in some cases with that stream light, or O light, onto your pistol. Um, one final note. So another thing with weapon mounted lights, um, tactical guys will suggest utilizing them as a, a, a passive aiming device. So passive aiming means you're not aiming down sights, towards your target, you're using some type of additional system to tell you where the muzzle is pointed. In most cases, that's a laser system. A laser is a passive aiming device, um, but you can also use a flashlight as a passive aiming device. So with the Streamlight TLR1 here at 10 feet, we can see where the center of the projected light is. So I know that because that is the center of the flashlight, that is where my muzzle is going to be pointing. So if I want to you know, fire from the hip or be at a low ready, then I can just move my flashlight around, know where that muzzle is pointed based on that center projected light, and then come up and shoot or just remain passive. Now the Streamlight is one of the tighter ones, but here that um, the most recent of weapon mounted light that I showed you guys has a similar system overall. Now, all of these lights that I showed you guys are going to be relatively inexpensive for what I would consider inexpensive. Uh, meaning that the PEC 15 is going to be the cheapest 
a weapon mounted light system and that is going to come at about $75 versus my most expensive one was either the uh, Inforce WML or it is the Streamlight slash Olight. The Streamlights and Olight just happen to be the same price at $129. Um, and I think that is a very, very acceptable range for weapon mounted lights, especially the ones that I tend to utilize, the Streamlight, the Olight, the Inforces, this really nifty clone here, which are all gonna be a much more rigid and durable um, with their housing systems and obviously with their contacts, electronics, internally, they need to be much more uh, reliably built and constructed, uh, especially with you know the stream lights and O lights being real firearm lights. If you're gonna induce recoil at all of anything, it needs to be able to keep that contact solder in place. So especially when I utilize systems like the Kitty T10, or the KWA LM4 gas blowback system, having those nicer flashlights designed for real firearms, really, really nice. They're not gonna go accidental strobe on me like that PEC-15 does. So that is why I wanted to give you guys an overview here. These are the lights that I like to utilize because they work really, really well for the reasons that I showed you guys here. If you do have any further questions, put them down in the comment section below. Obviously, there's a lot of other brands of lights that I would like to try out and try to do comparisons on, um, but there's just too many brands and I only have so much cash. <laughs> so um, with that, I'm all done here. So you guys take care, stay safe, stay positive, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Take care. So here at 10 total feet, again, a very bright uh, center projection, and it actually throws light as far as that outer radius, um, much wider compared to that of the Streamlight previously. It's hitting 